Radio Network. And welcome to Allen Arena, the home of the David Lipscomb Bisons, but more important, Tim Taggett, it is the home of the Division II A and AA State Championship Series. It is home for excitement. Yes, I, it is. As I stood up in the lobby area, uh, you don't get the largest crowds into these tournaments, but you certainly get people that are excited. I didn't see one person come in that was not thrilled to be here, and you've got two good basketball teams looking for a state championship. Neither one have had one, so it'd be... Uh, uh, something that obviously they're going to shoot at and go for, and we'll see in about, uh, what, uh, seven minutes how well, this Tim, one turns out. Tim, at first game today, uh, boy, it was it was up and down the floor, and through three quarters, it was a white knuckler or a slobber knocker. Of course, a little free throw shooting late in the contest by Franklin Road Academy pushed that one out, and Franklin Road advances on to cha championship action on Saturday. I didn't get to see the entire game. I saw the second half of Franklin Road Academy to look very good. Uh, they Ball handling skills. Uh, played well toward the end of the basketball game, and Harding just had a tough time scoring yep. in the last part of the game. Well, in that uh, boys game that you got to see, that Harding team, Harding started out with a bang, and then it got close, and then it like a tale of two cities, only as a tale of two halves. And USN owned the second half, and so they advanced to the boys championship. But our game today is from a team that should have uh, should have been considered considered almost a prohibitive favorite, Knox Webb. But they've lost back in December with an ACL tear, their great star. And that would be Marjorie Butler, who last year committed to Georgia. And uh, she was averaging 26 a game when she went down. And that changes the complexion. It kind of brings them bit. back to the pack a little bit, doesn't it? It, it does at that. But uh, there are two teams with Miss Basketball winners who are our favorites here. And, of course, uh, Franklin Road Academy has uh, uh, Derricka White, the 2010 winner. And... Uh, Knox Webb, though, still considered one of the favorites for this. But I, I tell you what, there might be a team in here right now called Ezel Harding that might beg to differ with them a little bit. Well, Webb, as you've mentioned, been to the state tournament eight times. They're veterans here, won a state championship back in 2009. And uh, Ezel Harding go all the way back 10 years ago to a state championship for them. Uh, in 2002 so we'll just have to see how the lady eagles from antioch right up the road uh, uh you'd expect a, a big crowd from ezel to show up and of course webb with the great traditions that they've got as well well tim i'm of course from west tennessee and have some ties to east tennessee no people here in middle tennessee but there's an eighth grader that i'm kind of fascinated about her her name is marcy marcy c sneed and uh, she took over in December as the starting point guard, and she must be a whale of a player. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing that myself. I want to remind everybody, if you're listening on audio, you can pick up the video feed of this tournament all tournament long as well by going to TWSAA.org or TWSAAnetwork.com, I believe it is, uh, Joe. And uh, I had a chance this afternoon before I came down just to kind of check it out and listen to Dick Palmer with the first uh, deal. And even I, with my limited skills, on the internet, I was able to pull up the uh, video feed. And well, it, it, I know about that. I've been playing with my uh, feed the whole time, but you can get it, and they say it sounds good back in West Tennessee. Heard from them. You and I have got a tough task, too, like the teams do. We have to follow the legend Dick Palmer and Chris Harris, the voice <laughs> of the Jackson Generals. Uh, Dick Palmer will uh, call this game today, Middle Tennessee baseball tomorrow. Head to Ohio Springs, Arkansas for a Middle Tennessee uh, Sunbelt Tournament action on Sunday. Well, I'm going to tell off on him. He was calling Union. He was the bark of the Bulldogs at oh, Union so University bark. back in the 60s when I played basketball there. Oh, my And we gosh. beat the University. He got to call both wins over the University I've, of Memphis. You know, I've heard many schools that have Bulldogs as a name, but I've never heard anybody referred to as a play-by-play -play man. The bark of the Bulldogs. I think that's great. He was the bark of the Bulldogs. Well, let's talk about Knox Webb a little bit. Shelly Collier's their coach uh, after the Jackson Christian School game. She had a giant group hug for the team, and they overcame the enormous loss of their Georgia signee star, Marjorie Butler. She was 
Division 2A, missed basketball last year. And uh, right after that game, Coach Carter said she felt speechless. But uh, tell you what, they have gotten it back together, and uh, they are doing a good job. And they're, they're ready to play in this one. A lot of other kids uh, like Anna Hur Hurdle and Kelsey Brown and Jane Romano picked up the slack there and uh, they are an inspired group of girls and this Ezel Harding team now they played some good basketball too I believe that they lost to Knoxville Webb back 43-45 back on February 17th and they get another shot at them today I'm gonna let you have a shot at uh, the starting lineup here in just a minute but I will say this Ezel Harding's got a couple of interesting names in their starting lineup we'll get out see what kind of show prep you've been able to well, do. Well, I'm, I'm going to see what we can do. We're about two minutes and eight seconds away from starting action, and it will it will take a little while because, as you well know, and I think it's one of the really great things they do, every young lady gets to set foot on the championship floor and be introduced. I don't know. Guys. Did you get to play for a state championship when you were in high school? No, we couldn't. We got beat on a last-second shot. Our only hope at Jackson High to get here, we never got here. I've had a couple of Northside teams here. And uh, and it's something every child I wish could have. A well, that, that's 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 kind of the point. I did not have that opportunity either. So just the thrill of being in a Final Four, a great arena. I mean, this is a this is the perfect place for the Division Two championships to be played. It's a loud arena. Uh, the crowd doesn't get lost in here. It's a beautiful place, a beautiful setting, and the people here at David Lipscomb just do a tremendous job. They really do. And a remind your fans, if you know somebody that wants to hear this game, we are streaming on the TWSAA network, as Tim told you earlier. The teams are going to their benches, and we'll be doing some starting lineups here in a minute. And then while they are an announcing all the team, Tim, you want me to go ahead and take that shot at these starting lineups now? Well, you might as well. That'd be fine with me. And then we can review them. Let's, let's go with Ezel Harding first, and they will be the home team on the scoreboard. Now, I didn't do my homework on first names, but starting at guard, number 10, Kiana Froden. Also starting number 12. I see history. I see numbers. I see music. I see spaceships. I see a butterfly. Each year, the School Advocates for Vision and Education in Memphis makes it possible for hundreds of school children to get the glasses they need, all for free. I see my future. So whatever they see, they see better. That's why Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee supports them. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. I see you. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcbst.com forward slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. Get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the TSS AA network, go to tssaanetwork.com slash sbp.
And Tim, we're back here, and we've got uh, finally got our lineup here in front of us. We'll get you caught up on network and local breaks as they're still introducing the web team. And like you said, that's a, a great situation for a young lady or a young gentleman to be introduced. And there's a good crowd here, even for this contest. Very lively crowd. Remind folks that uh, immediately following this game, well, make it 15 minutes after this one, Donaldson Christian Academy boys and web boys will finish up today's play uh, here from David Lipscomb. And uh, the winner of this contest will take on Fayette Academy, make that uh, Franklin Road Academy, I'm sorry, who was a winner earlier today over Fayette Academy, 39-27 in that contest. And that game was much closer uh, through three quarters than a uh, couple of three-pointers by Franklin Road Academy there at the end of the third quarter really set that off, and then they hit their foul shot. Those two teams had five losses between them coming into the basketball game, so that tells you that th these were two really, really good teams uh, coming into this one. Uh, the record for Webb is 24 and 6, as you mentioned, and for Ezell Harding, their record 27 and 4. And we are about ready to jump this up, and Anna Hurdle uh, is going to jump. Pair of 15's Hurdle will jump for Webb, and Anisha Harmon is going to jump for the Ezell Christian School Lady Eagles. Not a lot of size for either squad on this on uh, the court right now. A lot of quick people there and the tip control by Ezel Harding Johnson has it she gets it down on the baseline to now and now and drives and she is fouled and we're only six seconds into this contest very quickly down the baseline as Jane Maramano called for the first foul of this contest first team foul first foul but we'll go to the line and shoot two let me make a correction and a hurdle call for the foul okay they did and first shot shot it got it and that is actually Tangenique Nowlin with the points, and she hit the second one. Two to nothing, he's L. Harding. Full court man press. Streaking across the line is Melton. She gets the ball off to the top of the circle to Vito. And dribbling is Hurdle. They'll use a lot of dribble action off this. Not quite the true dribble motion. It goes out of bounds, Tim. He's L. in a set up in a I couldn't tell if it's 2-3 two, or 1-2-2 two, two zone. We'll check it out here in just a little bit, but uh, very aggressive. Yeah, they picked up man and then dropped back into that zone. They'll go with a 1-4 across the baseline. Looks like man-to-man -man coming out of this one, though. And driving hard to the hole and dishing off is Webb, and their shot from three, no good by Brown. Rebound picked up, and Tangenique Nowlin has been a very busy young lady, and she brings it across. Quickly out front, then back to her. Her three-pointer up off the iron. Good block out that time by Hurdle, and she lets it go out of bounds. Belongs to Webb. And uh, we've played less than a minute. Lots of action, as you mentioned. All We're going to see a lot of full-court pressure, as we mentioned. Neither squad, lots of size, so they'll depend upon their quickness. Tim, I'm small enough. I could play in, in this contest and, and could play post. And Webb with the basketball. You see it on the left wing. Get it inside the Hurdle and a little traveling music. Got a little excited with the feet. That was a pretty easy call for the referees to make. Shuffle the feet and we'll come the other way. Now we've got full man pressure by Webb, but they don't pick up the inbounder. And she steps in, Molly Melton with it. She's a freshman over on the wing to Froden. Froden looks, looks, what needs help. And they call a timeout. No, they didn't call the timeout. The official thought there was a timeout called. <laughs> Coach says, wait a minute. I didn't call the timeout so they get it up back underway. And Chief. that's a good correctable error. Sneed with it. Crossover dribble. Goes to the right. Bounce pass. Cuts off the high post. Nowlin down in the corner to Sneed. Sneed trying to feed inside. Knocked around. Who's going to pick it up? And it's Webb with the basketball. Jane Romano gets it. Off over to Melton. Melton drives in. Kicks it to Vito. And she hits and ties this contest at two. Took her time, set it up, and knocked it right down the bottom. She really did. Good shooter. I remember last year she hit a couple of long bombs. Here comes Ezel Harding on the attack. Driving the baseline with it is Johnson, and she got called for the charge, Tim. The official took a time. I'm not sure he was real decisive with the call, trying to decide, but that was the call, and we'll bring it the other way, tied 2-2. Two to two. Well, sometimes the theory on that is it's better to take a little time than to make an Correct. error. I don't know. I, I officiated till my eyesight got bad and I gave it up. 
I could make several comments about that. Yes, a lot of us could. Ball on the wing with Kelsey Brown feeding inside. Knocked away, but picked up by Webb. And picking it up, Brown gets it down in the corner to Vito. Pass knocked away. Scramble for it. Who's going to get it? Vito gets it. And then it's tied up. And the possession arrow. Let's check it out. It belongs to Ezel Harding. Did you see the expression on the face of the players down on the floor? I mean, they just did not want to give that basketball up at all. No, you really don't ever want to. Kate Collier getting ready to check in. Now they're going to see if they're going to change it. Yes, they are. It will belong yeah. to, to Webb of Knoxville. Webb School of Knoxville, the official name. And it is man-to-man, -man, Tim. Running off the screen, they looked down for Brown, but they go out front and now over on the left wing to Melton. Melton goes back to Brown and we got a foul underneath. Yeah, pick away from the basketball to get the shooter open. The call goes against Webb's number 12, Jane Romano, I believe. Let's, yeah. Romano trying to set a good one down there and just a hair too good. Here's that full court pressure again. Stolen up and in. Scoring that time was number 14, Molly Melton. The nice thing about the steal, Joe, is when she tipped it away, she tipped it right toward the basket. She was able to pick it up and lay it in almost in one motion. A great point there, Tim. Ball knocked away from Sneed, the eighth grader, and now trying to inbound will be Johnson for Ezel Harding, and she does get it in. They go to Tangenique Nowlin when they get in trouble, Tim. And a turnover picked up there by Brown. And here's Webb on the run. That's Collier just in the game, 15-footer off the back of the iron. Rebound, but he throw her shot up and good. Really nice play there as she got the basketball on it. A little bit of a scoop shot. All the hands were up in the air, and she was able to come up underneath and lay it in. And Tim, to get caught up, I think we owe our local stations a, a break. Let's take a one-minute timeout. It's the call of something bigger. A job. Want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcvst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. crossover dribble and she really won't sneed to handle it so she can get down in there and get into the post area boy great defense crossover dribble sneed drives gives it off going to the hole got her shot blocked but there's a foul and johnson will go to the line and shoot too webb has given up the baseline two or three different times in this basketball game and coaches have different philosophy i know the way i was always coached never give up the baseline but you know now joe a lot of times you give it up wanting to invite that weak side help to come across and take the basketball. You really do try and draw that charge. Aaliyah Johnson's first shot up and good. The sophomore now, I believe, one for one from the free throw line. Her first points of the night. She'll try her second one with her team trailing. Second one off the iron. Rebound comes down to Webb. Over to Melton. Melton, long pass to Collier. Collier wants to drive. She kicks it back outside. And the shot up and no good by Romano. All Ezel Harding on the rebound. Yeah, and here comes Ezel Harding down in the step drive, as I call it. Rebound, it'll go off of Nowlin's hands. You can get into a debate all day long whether that's a travel or not, and I think sometimes officials not real sure. And by the time you decide, I think that might have been a travel. It's too late to blow the whistle. Older coaches, most of us think that's a travel. The younger ones all like it. That's, you know, Michael Jordan. I think they she had got an Jordan extra step, rule. don't you? Yes, the, playing by the Jordan rules, maybe. <laughs> Ball on the left wing over to Brown. Brown looking, gets a screen. On the right side to Collier. Collier wants to catch a high screen. She does to her left. Drives, bounces into the post. Kick back out. Collier's three up. Collier's three in and out. Rebound fall four. And it's picked up by Feenstra. Into the ball game for Ezell Harding. And they say it last touch Feenstra. Finster was trying to get a call from the official, looked uh, with a, the pleading eyes, and off we come the other direction. 
officials are special people. They get all kinds of things. These young ladies are all so nice. You want to help them all out. And the ball coming into the forecourt with Brown having it on the right wing. She drives. Her shot up, no good. Rebound, flip back in and pulling it down is Johnson for Ezell Harding. Running it down is Finstra on the left side. She looks, wants help. Here comes Johnson off of a pick. And they go back to the baseline. As Tim was telling you, they've had some success with that. Webb switched to a 2-3 zone. They game. have. They have. And they've kind of set back inside the uh, three-point line for now, content to let Ezell Harding move it around the perimeter. They really are. A little pitch and catch. Sneed got it about 30 feet away. And now on the wing, back to Sneed. Sneed and Johnson playing pitch and catch as Johnson drives and gives it to Nowlin. Nowlin goes up. Kind of got a lot of contact, but no harm, no foul. And a rebound. Webb's Collier over to Melton. She's looking, gives it off, and Collier's got it. Gets that screen from Romano, drives in length. Her shot blocked by Harmon, and Harmon on the run out. Goes up left-handed, but she is fouled. Trying to get the number for Webb, trying to step in and take the charge, but uh, clearly did not get there in time for the position. Well, Harmon threw it in fourth gear then, and you didn't have time to get there and set up. Foul goes against Kelsey Brown. Harmon hasn't been to the line yet. She eyes her first shot. The left-hander looks her shot on the way and off the iron. A little flat, Tim. Good idea by Brown trying to get the charge. You can see she was coached how to get that done. She just couldn't get there in time. Now Harmon now 0 for 1. Has one rebound in this contest. Eyes it, tries it, and buys it, that one. It makes it Webb 6, Ezell Harding 4 at the 304 mark in the first quarter of play. Melton across the timeline for Webb. Here's Brown's shot from the right wing. Rebound picked up down inside. Knocked off and given to Brown. They like those threes. And there's the rebound out to Feenstra. Stolen away from her by Melton. Melton's all over the place. Melton drives hard, pulls it up, goes to Romano, right baseline. Her three off the back of the iron. And pulling the rebound is Nowlin. You're right, they're not a bit shy from that line, are they? No, they're not a bit shy. And here's Sneed, the eighth grader, going to the left baseline. The shot from the left baseline, off, rebound, fought for. And let's see who they say touched it last. It's off the green-clad web, Lady Spartans. Joe, a lot of action on the weak side uh, looking for that rebound. The official chose not to call anything. I think they were probably pushing and shoving on both sides. The ball goes out of bounds. He does. One four attack with... Harmon sliding up to get it. She drives. She's stripped of it. He gets away, and let's see. It is off Webb. I don't think we're going to be shy on substitutions either tonight, Tim. Smith, Davis back in for Webb. Yeah. Lots of substitutions. And triggering it is Nowlin out front to Sneed. Sneed looks over and finds Johnson. John, they play pitch and catch now out front. Back and forth, we'll attack the left side, back to the right side to Johnson. Down in the corner, back to Johnson, skip past the Sneed. She wanted to fire it up there, back to Johnson, now over on the side to Froden. And they, Tim, it's around the horn. Nisha Harmon playing the high post for Ezell Hardy, just can't get away. Madison Davis really shatting her almost as a one-on-one -on -one in that 1-2-2 one, two, two zone. Uh, yeah. two, one, two zone. Yeah, Davis knocked it away, but hustling with Harmon, now it's loose again. That looks like Collier with the pickup. Out front to Melton. Melton drives left side. Crosses over and scores. Gives her team an 8-4 lead, 132. And here's Ezell Harding attacking very quickly. Froden has it on the right wing. Ball knocked away and gets it to Sneed. Sneed to Johnson, left wing. Johnson looks down on the baseline, pulling Harmon away from the low post. And I tell you what, that time Romano just said, I'm knocking it out of your hands. Shelly Collier up very active in front of the Ezell Harding bench, trying to get her team to just attack the basket a little bit stronger. This web zone is really taking them out of their game. Deep pass into the back of the forecourt to Sneed by Ezell Harding. She'll drive right, gets it knocked away, picks it back up. Long pass down in the corner and lost there and picked up by Davis for the Lady Spartans. And her long pass to... Smith in the forecourt over to Collier on the right wing. She goes up. And Tim, will it be blocked or charged? They get a block. Two officials looked at each other. They didn't want to call opposite things. Made the decision. Haley Johnson, by the way, on the move down on this end, 
came up a little gimpy. She's trying to walk off a strain in the knee, and I believe she's going to get a little bit of a break right now. That's the first foul on Tanjanique Nowlin, the junior forward. And at the line for two shots, Collier will be there. First one shot it, and off the back of the iron. Katie Collier at the line, her team leading 8 4 at the 59.6 second mark. Collier bounces it, eyes it, a lot of noise on the end. Second one, nothing but net. 9 4, Webb lead. Full Ball. court, 2 2 1, pressure from Webb. And they change those defenses and attacking it. Froden with a crossover dribble to Sneed. Sneed's pass lobbed across, knocked away but picked up by Harmon. She'll drive her shot up off the iron, no good. Davis plays Windex Lady and cleans the glass, and here's Melton motoring into the forecourt. Over on the right baseline, the shot up by Smith, no good. Rebound Davis, up and in. Jim. Madison Davis did a really nice job, came from the free throw line basically to get that rebound, and almost a steal from Webb, but right. not out of bounds. Yeah, Romano jumping over there to save it, 28.7 seconds. Webb leads 11 to four. And now they run a little more clock time. They said stop it a little early. Official time is 27.3 seconds. And to inbound it will be Froden. Kiana Froden pass into the backcourt to Sneed, knocked away, but she retrieves it. That's a good battle, Melton and Sneed. Crossover into the forecourt. We have man to man this trip. Yep. On the left wing, now back to Froden on the right wing. She tries to penetrate, kick it back out to Sneed. Sneed needs help. There's Nowlin at the 10 second mark. She puts it on the floor, goes behind her back, spins, goes up, her jumper. Air ball, rebound, Melton, one second. It's the long heave, will it be good? No, off the back of the glass. And at the end of one quarter play, Webb of Knoxville, 11, Ezel Harding, four. Let's take a one minute timeout. It's the call of something. Wanna take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. Here at David Lipscomb University, want to win $100 for yourself or $1,000 for your school, enter a chance to win in the fan face-off contest. Check out the Blue Cross Championship Facebook page to enter. Tim, we're ready for second quarter action with Webb of Knoxville leading 11 to four over Ezel Harding, but we've had a lot of great action. Ezel just desperate for some offense, really not getting anything untracked right now. Yeah, it's that cornbread and onion breath defense right now by Webb and driving is Harmon. Her left-handed scoop layup is up and here. Actually, the hook layup. Melton's got it coming down the left side. They fill the lanes, they being Webb. And here's Brown with it, trying to feed Davis to the post and it's thrown away for a turnover. And picking it up is Smith. Well, that's actually Feenster. Feenster got it. And that time they'll get Katie Collier for a little bit too much aggression. Joe just looking at the shooting percentage. Ezel Harding does not have a field goal in the contest. All points from the free throw line, 0 of 7. Webb has shot it 16 times, which tells you a lot about which end of the floor we played more on, 5 of 16, but 0 of 6 from the arc. And, Tim, you have great eyesight because I'm right up on it and I have to go to the bifocals. <laughs> I'm a young man, Joe. You are a young man. Driving on the hole with Sneed. Sneed shot there you up go. and good. And there you go. You got them their first field goal. And now he's L. Harding trails by five at the seven. I'm not mark. rooting for anybody, folks. I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Here's Brown dribbling out front. Over to Katie Carter. She gets that screen and drives looking for Davis. Nice spin move. Up and good. You know, Madison Davis did not start this basketball game, Joe. But I, I tell you what, she's a really good player. Sophomore 5'10". And... Uh, 
She's really making her presence known on both ends of the floor. She's one for one, and she has rebounded, blocked shots. Back into the 2 3 zone as well. But on the right wing, it's pitch and catch again. And we'll just we'll pick it up as it goes around. Feenster now drives. Five footer, high arcing shot, and oh, it's she, drilled. Madison Davis came out to try to block it, and you're right. She just shot it a little higher than Davis was. There's a crash on this end. And the foul will go against uh, Ezell Hardy. We'll check a number. Feenstra wanted that charge then bad, Tim, but I think she was a second late. <laughs> well, that was quite the crash. I like both teams right here. Lots of good emotion and wholesale changes coming back into the contest. Aaliyah Johnson for Ezell Harding. And let's see if we can pick up. I know Romano is back in. Jane Romano for Webb. And let's see who else came in. Kelly... Vito came back in. Ezel in a 1-3-1 zone, yes. I think. And almost with Steele's now on, but down to Vito and back to Brown. Oh, there's that angle pass into the low wow, post. Terrific pass yeah. from Kelsey Brown. Jane Romano gets that one, and that is her first two points of the night. Back against that zone. It's a 1-3-1 offense on the left wing. The shot up and no good by Johnson. And Webb's dominating the boards right now, Tim. Here's the shot by Melton. Her three is up off the iron. Rebound, one shot, and pulled down by Kate Froden, or Kiana Froden, that is. Froden gets it over to Johnson. Down on the baseline to Harmon. She's trying to feed the cutting now, and who gets it goes, and there'll be a foul with the lower body. You know, I'm trying to figure out just exactly what's happening because Webb has 19 shots on goal. Ezell Harding with just 10 shots. Uh, turnovers three for Webb. Eight turnovers against Ezell Harding. I think I just found my answer. Yep. And that and Webb has 12 rebounds to nine. Yeah, I'd love to know how many of them are offensive rebounds. We'll get that stat here at halftime. I yes, we will. Sure. Here's the one four set up into Snead. Into the cutting. She passes to the cutting Harmon. And now the lead is 15-10. Webb and Webb wants to talk about it. Now they may want to put me on staff over at Ezell Harding since I've made that point of no field goals. They've hit three of their last four shots, I believe, Joe. Yes, they have. They're, we're going to keep it here right now. Webb is 7 for 19. 0 oh for 7, though, from three-point land. Ezell Harding now has scored since Tim uh, pointed out that they didn't have any in the first quarter. They're 2 for 10, 0 oh for 3, but they are 4 for 6 from the free-throw line. And uh, six fouls for Webb. They've committed six. Only three fouls committed by Ezell Harding. 5.31 to go in this first half of basketball at the Blue Cross Basketball Championships here at David Lipscomb University. Division one, Division II, uh, single A tomorrow. Action all day long, and then the state championship games, four of them on Saturday. You're absolutely right about that. 5.31, as Tim told you, Webb 15, he's L. Harding 10, and inbounding the ball to Melton, and she's been a busy young lady tonight. She takes it to the left side to Collier. Collier looking back out front, and let's see, here comes the screen, and feeding to the high post, Davis. Nice move, took it to the hole with him and laid it up. Yeah, she's a, she's a good, smart player in there, Joe, uh, she, as a sophomore. She's She's going to be a, a really good one for Webb. You can see that already. Six points on the night, and they feed inside. Harmon tries a jump hook, no good. And there's Davis again with the rebound. This time, he's L. Harding. Picks up a little bit in backcourt, try to slow it down. Hurdle back in the ball game, and she has it looking for Melton. And let's see, we're still, yeah, we're still playing zone. No, we go man to man. He's L. Harding also on the left wing. Back out front to Collier. She wanted to crank it. Looks for Hurdle. Back to Collier. Her three. Up and three down. It took them, uh, what, eight shots to finally get the first three to go, but that uh, that's the first triple for Webb. First triple in the ball game. They are. They're still with the 2-3 zone. Coach Wanton hands up. Three-point shot outside by Froden. No good. Romano fighting for that one and grimacing down there. Well, when you've the got game. the inside position and you know how to use your body to screen off, you can okay. make that happen. Boy, Melton brings it, bounces though off of Davis's hands, and this time, Nowlin got it. She goes one on three, now two on three, goes up to the hole and she's fouled. And she cut right through three people. Nowlin going to the line, and Tim, who was that foul on? We're going to call that foul on number 15 for Ezell Harding, I believe. Or Webb, I'm sorry, 15, that'd be Anna Hurdle. 
And the first shot up, and no good. That one by now, and she's now two for three from the free throw line. She had hit her first two. Webb has jumped this lead up to 20 to 10 at the 4.07 mark. Now on second shot, off the front of the iron. Rebound and block out by Romano. Finds Brown. Brown harassed that time by Froden. And she gets it to Melton, who's about 40 feet away. Driving right, looks, finds Collier. 3.55 in the quarter. There's the cutting Davis, but Collier puts it on the floor. Over to Brown on the left wing. Skip pass to Romano. She gives a screen. There goes Collier after she gets it. They feed inside to Romano. Her five-foot jumper off the iron. Tipped around. Will come out of it, and it's tipped out to Collier. Back to Melton. To Davis. I don't think Davis wants that one. She finds Romano, and now the kick out to Brown, who wanted the three and stops her drive. Collier's got it. Sets the offense. A lot of motion in this offense. You know, in football, we have a, a stat, as the fouls call it, called time of possession. Yep. You don't see that in basketball, but if that were the case, Webb would be dominating, wouldn't you think? Webb would be dominating. That foul looked like it went on Kiana Froden. We'll check it and make sure, and it is her first. And they are a little dominant on the scoreboard now, leading 20 to 10, 318 to go second quarter. Here's Melton getting it back on the right wing. There's the pass into the high post. Nice high-low into Romano. Her Hook layup, no good. Rebound pulled down by Halea Johnson. Here's Ezel Harding on the run to Harmon. Harmon to Nallen. Nallen's running one-hander. Nice little floater in front. It is in there. Split a couple defenders and then held her composure and laid it right in the basket. Five, five or six feet in front, I guess. Nallen's fourth point. Man-to-man -man defense, and that's pretty good defense. They got Davis outside, and they don't go out and guard her at the three. Around the horn to Romano, right wing. Gives to Brown. There's the screen for. They try to feed Davis. Turnover. And here comes Nallen with the left-handed dribble. Gives it off to Harmon. Harmon stops. Tries to pop. Gets it partially blocked. Rebound Collier. And Coach, Coach Collier <laughs> holds it up as Melton has it. Gives a little instruction. Here is the crossover. Melton to Brown right wing. Cutters come through the lane. Out to Romano. Top her three is up. And her three is down, Tim. Yeah, they found the range, and I'll tell you what, Webb now with a 23-12 lead. Ezel Harding wants a timeout, finding themselves down by double, double digits now. Tim, we'll take a 30-second uh, commercial, and then we will be back with a message from the TWSAA. Musco Sports Lighting, the official lighting partner of TSSAA, would like to congratulate all the championship participants on a great season. From high school athletics to NASCAR super speedways and Olympic Games, Musco helps communities in Tennessee and across the globe save money in energy and operating costs while minimally impacting the environment. To find out more about how Musco can help with your sports lighting needs, visit musco.com. And back at Allen Arena, Tim, you've got a good message for everybody. The TSSAA championships are brought to you by the Tennessee Governor's Highway Safety Office. Remember, booze it and lose it. They've been a supporter of TSSAA, Joe, for a long, long time. Yes, they have. And I, I tell you what, uh, we one of the two games that you and I are going to do, we'll hear from uh, Kim Benatta. And I tell you what, a lovely young lady, but she's done a lot of good work with that program and also everybody in the office there at the Governor's Highway Safety Let me tell you something about Webb School. We mentioned Madison Davis, just a sophomore. You, you use the name Molly Melton a lot. She's a freshman, also playing a great deal in this game. Katie Collier, she's a freshman, so Webb's going to be around a while. You're right. And it looks like they've gone to a 2-3 or a 1-3. Well, they, they sure showed a one-guard front, but here's Harmon with it down on the baseline. Nowland's quick shot up off the back of the iron. There's a rebound fault for and they said it was on Johnson. It'd be her second if that is Johnson. And 15 foul. Webb came out of the timeout, Joe, and as soon as they, Ezell brought the ball across half court, they jumped the ball out front. He really extended their zone and uh, uh, quite effective. It really was. 151 in the first half. Webb 23, Ezell Harding fifth or 12. Here's Brown off the screen and roll down into the post. Davis, her skip pass over the head of Melton. And you're right, but you don't think the way Melton's played, you don't think of her as a oh, no, no, not at all. And Davis, same way, even though that pass was too high. They understand what going inside out would be. You get the ball to Davis, they suck in on top of her. She kicks it right back out. They're looking for that three and, and the, the position well, just uh, a little errant with the pass. 
And Tim, it is a 1-3-1 zone. Trying to trap down in the corner. Feinster shot up, no good. Rebound belongs to Webb, and here's Melton on the outlet pass, bringing it down into the right corner to Brown. Her three is off the front of the iron. Melton with the rebound. Hook layup going in there and puts the ball in the hole. It's 25 -12. Really nice ball control there for Melton. Boy, isn't she good at that. Here's an attempt to get Feinster the ball, but a little bit high for him. EZL Harding just 4 of 16, Joe, from the field, and thus their problems. You know, you shoot 25% against a good team, which Webb obviously is. And you're going to struggle. And they've changed defenses on it, and Ezell Harding's never got their rhythm so far, Tim. I agree with that 100%. Here's the man-to-man -man by Ezell Harding and driving as Melton bounced off to Davis, and there was a, a tugging match for it. Collier comes up with it. Her sh jump shot floating goes through the hole. 27-12 Webb with 52 seconds left in the second quarter. Just very methodical stretching this lead. Yes. Sneed drives, gives it to Johnson. Back to Sneed out front. They're playing pitch and catch out front again. Ezell Harding may look for the last shot. Set 1-3-1 one, one down in the corner to Froden, and she'll dribble out of there, skipping it across to the cutting Johnson, who wants to go up. They call jump ball, and the possession arrow says it belongs to Webb. The official said both players had possession of the ball at the same time, and uh, that's called a jump ball. Davis to inbound for Webb. Well, we're showing our age, though, by calling a jump ball, right? It's a held ball, I yes. guess, would be one yes. of these. So we don't jump the ball anymore. You know, there's some people, including Dick Vitale, that want to bring back the jump ball. Well, I guess I've gotten used to this. It took a while. Yeah, here's Davis, top of the circle. She'll drive 15-footer from the free-throw lineup. Off the iron, rebound Johnson. She gets it out to Froden. Froden, crossover dribble, gives it to Harmon. Harmon looks back for Froden. She's trapped there and now finds an opening, gives it to Sneed, her shot up, no good at the four second mark. Two seconds, here's Webb, one second, it's up. I think they're gonna say the shot got off too late. And at the end of one half of play, Webb School of Knoxville, 27. Ezell Harding Christian School, 12. We're going to take a two minute break, a two minute break. Want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. There are many reasons why 96% of First Tennessee customers would recommend us. Here are a few. Well, what I love about First Tennessee is that everybody knows me when I walk through the door. They actually get excited when they see you walk into the branch, and I love that. They can't stop me from singing the praises of, of my bank. Would I go anywhere else? Absolutely not. I'm a 96. I'm a 96. I'm a 96. Are you a 96? Come see why 96% of our customers would recommend us.
Quick stats for Ezel Harding, Venstra. And here come the stats that are a little easier to read right there. Tim, you are a lifesaver. Uh, let's go with Johnson first. She played 13 minutes and uh, she was 0 for 1. And I don't think with the time, I better just do the points. Jo Aaliyah Johnson had one point. Anisha Harmon had three points. Tanjanique Nallon with four points. Marcy Sneed with two. Hey, you want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. Get involved at bcvst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. And she was a busy young lady in and out and Webb's changed defenses again. They're going back man to man, Tim. It looked like a very aggressive man to man as well. And it Pop, is. Popping into the backcourt is Marcy Sneed with her team trailing by 15. Crossover dribble. On the left wing, and that's Harmon. She feeds to the cutting Nowlin and a jump ball to start it off with. And there's that turn where you and I are old, a hell ball. Hurdle jumped into the passing lane and uh, got it back. Ezell Harding, if they're going to climb back in it, Joe's going to have to get it done here in the first minute or two, I would think. They really are. You see the long pass over Romano's head as she goes after it. And the turnover makes it belong to Ezell Harding. We've only got 13 seconds into the second half and a lot of action and already. Two turnovers. Two turnovers, big ones. Here's the long pass to half court to Harmon. Romano got there, but stepped by Harmon. Her shot up off the side of the glass. Picked up by the, one of the busiest people on the floor, Melton. Melton to Brown. Through the legs dribble and back out front. Over to Anna Hurdle. The left-hander shot off the back of the iron. And pulling it down is Tanjanique Nowlin. And she is in the front court. Good, got a good stop and go move, but this time it goes off the defender's feet, rolled around. Tim, second hell ball of this half. Joe, I want to make the point, the last trip down the floor, Webb's press did not steal the basketball, but it forced a very quick off-balance shot. Sometimes the press doesn't, you don't have to steal the ball to be effective with your press. A good point, and anybody that coaches out there or you fans can appreciate that tip and watch for it the next time. Inbounded to Marcy Sneed. She's an eighth grader. Back over to Johnson. Johnson drives right side. Crossover, spins, goes up. Her shot partially blocked. Fought for, and let's say they say he's held hard. Spun right the into a double team, and uh, the ball squirted loose, and Webb will bring it back the other way. Good defense by Knox Webb. Boy, Webb's long pass by Vivito to the half line to hurdle, hurdle across court, and they don't mind throwing it around the horn, do they, Tim? They do not. And as we'll remind you, not only can you catch this on the internet, but you can watch this game live. And on the left wing, here's Hurdle wanting to drive, kicks it off to Brown. That pass barely gets through. She'll take one just inside the arc. Misses, rebound, Bevito misses. Romano gets it, misses. Here's Johnson for Ezel Hart. Three shots at it for Webb, couldn't score. Yep, to Froden. Froden's forced to pick it up. Nowlin with it, wants to drive, takes it to the hole. She's fouled. She'll go to the line. You said it just right, Joe. You could just see it in her face. She kind of clenched that jaw, and it wasn't a matter of when she was going to go. I mean, if she was going to go, it was when. He drove it tough to the hole and was going to get two free throws. Gave it the Jordan look. You could almost <laughs> tell when he was going, and you can't stop him. No, he took that elbow back and kind of kind of put that ball in the, in, the, in the holster over here, and you knew she was going to draw. And at the line. Shooting two, Tanjanique now, her first one in and out. One of those United States steel shots. <laughs> Holy cow. Now and now two for four. She hit her first two and now she's missed two. Second shot, shot it, got it. 27-13 at the 631 mark. Ezel Harding trailing. I like Melton and Sneed. What a battle between two youngsters. We could see them a couple more years, Tim. On the wing, Brown wants to shake and bake. Now goes to the top of the circle, crosses over to Romano. Romano driving. 
Bounces it off right into the hands of Nowlin. Nowlin's outlet to Sneed, to Johnson. Didn't touch the floor to Froden. Her shot up, no good, but there's Johnson to rebound. And she kind of bounced on the floor a little bit, and they're gonna call a hell ball. Yeah, Ezell Hardy crowd up wanting a foul. You know, Ezell has gotten done what they need to do on one end of the floor. That Webb has not scored in two minutes. Ezell scored just one, though. You can't really cut into much of a lead if, by that direction. If, uh, if they can continue defensively, they got a shot. You're right, Tim. Smith, Collier, and Davis checking back in for Webb. Boy, here's a battle between Melton and Sneed. The pass contested goes on the right wing to Imani Smith. She picks up the loose ball and back to Melton, and they'll set their offense again. To Bavito on the right wing. There's the cutters coming through. Davis curl cuts to the basket, gets it, and just goes through her hand. Yeah, Vito was just a little late finding her. Uh, Davis cut, made a nice head fake and then dived back in toward the basket and was open. It was a little late on the pass and then a little hot as well. And folks, if you don't know, you've got two coaches sitting here. Tim, a great coach here in Middle Tennessee. <laughs> the later, later a principal, but we won't hold that against you. I'm, I, I guess I'm getting back into my coaching mode here. Yes, yeah, Sneed uh, drives, kicks it off. Here's Harmon, the left-handed drive up and in. She was not to be denied, Tim. Here's Melton splitting the pressure. Long pass ahead to Vivito. Her shot up and good. 29-15, 5-10 to go in the third quarter. And in the end action is Harmon quickly into the forecourt. Loses it. And they say it, they, they being Ezell Harding says it went off of Davis. Davis said, I didn't touch it. Well, it, it was, I was not paying enough attention to see what was going on, but uh, the official was right there looking at it. He surely saw which leg it went off of. His perspective is better than ours right here. But driving on the Holy Smith, her shot up, no good. She's fouled, and I think the referee's going to pick Nowlin for that one. It could have been either girl. Split two defenders and went up to the basket, and uh, yeah, she got hit right across the top of the head, it looked like. And if that's now, it should be her second foul. And I believe the team's first foul, 457 mark, and going to the line is Amani Smith. She has not been there tonight. Her first shot up and good. Joe, relatively foul-free game. I'm looking, 14 fouls have been called in the basketball game. We played, uh, what, two and a half quarters. Uh, that's, that's pretty good pace. Nobody in foul trouble either. She hit her first one, making it a 30-15 lead. Imani Smith of Webb School of Knoxville ready for her second one. Eyes it, tries it, and it misses off the front of the iron. Rebound Johnson. Johnson to Sneed. Sneed on the run out. She goes up. Her shot partially blocked. Rebound Imani Smith, and here it is, the infamous <laughs> hell ball. Sneed went right into the teeth of two different players and uh, showed no fear whatsoever. She's going to be a really good one. Here's that 1-4, and they slide up the lane, kick it to Johnson, back to Sneed, wanting to feed Nowlin in the post. She's got it. Swings it under, goes up. Her shot just a little short, and there she is, Davis playing Windex Lady. Long outlet for Collier. Collier looking. They've got a three-on-one with a trailer coming. Collier takes it. It rolls off the iron. Knocked Whoa. around. Who got it? Melton for Webb. Over to Collier, she starts to drive. Skip pass to Smith, her three from the left side. Off the back of the iron, Collier with the rebound. She drives, her credit card's been revoked. It's a charge. It's a charge. Holding her position inside was Johnson for Ezell Harding, and uh, so we'll bring it back the other way. And Johnson looking things over as Webb goes to full court pressure. And I believe they're going to match 1-2, one, 1-1, one, one, but they match up out of it, and they'll trap that first pass. It's into Sneed. She beats the trap down the sideline and running stride for stride. And I think they're going to get Smith for having a saddle on Sneed then. Well, the nice thing about Sneed is she can use both hands. You notice she came up the left sideline using that left hand. And, uh, you know, for a young lady of, of uh, eighth, eighth grade, as you mentioned, uh, you don't find much of that anymore. She's an eighth grader. I couldn't use my left hand until I got a little older, and I played college basketball, yeah. Tim. I like a great matchup right here, Melton and Sneed. They get after each other. You like it. Into the high post to Johnson. Johnson kicks it out on the wing to Nowlin. Nowlin's shot rolls around, comes off, and there's a – no, they'll call the foul. I thought it was going to be a hell ball or a tie. But I believe they're going to get Johnson. He's L. Harding have not been able to cut into that 15-point lead that was at the half in spite of holding Webb to just three points in this half. 
And this will be Johnson's third foul. That's the first person really in any foul trouble for either team. They just have to get hot. They had some better looks in the second half for sure. They really have 359 as Melton crosses the timeline. Looks for Davis about 35 feet away on the right side. There's the cutters. The curl cut by Vivito. Bounced around off her hand. She got it, and I think she's going to be fouled, but they say she took the T-Berry shuffle. No, the three seconds. The official says three seconds, and Shelly Collier's up questioning that, but Joe, she did she did fake, fake, fake a good long time. You don't see a lot of three seconds. I think that's why people get a little bit more upset by it. You don't see that call much. You're right. Here's the change. 2-2-1 two, two, press, Tim. And Snee's got it back across to Feinster. They play pitch and catch as they advance the ball. Feinster and Snead. Now Snead looking to go along. There's Feinster at about the eight mark. Gets it across the line. And there is the infamous kick ball. <laughs> well, she got every bit of it, too, didn't she? Got she it up sure in about did. the sixth row. I'll tell you what, now, in college, we played a 1-3-1. One, one, and Coach Bill Henry would buy you a hamburger and a Coke if you could kick ten balls out of bounds is that right? in the 1-3-1. One, well, it disrupts your offense. And here's the inbound pass to Snead. She feeds it off into the left wing to Feenstra. Her three-pointer, no good. Rebound there, Smith to Melton. Melton wanting to run. Got Vivito down long pass a little high. She flips it back in, turnover. Well, but give up. Melton credit. She's got her yeah. eyes up on that end of the floor. Found the open player, just couldn't get it to her. Harmon in a hurry. Her pass, though, knocked away and off of the hand. And here's Melton again with it. She's looking for Smith. Always trying to get it ahead. His 10 point out. It's going to be off Collier. Well, hands. you know, as I mentioned, the point guard for Ezel being able to use the left hand, Melton being able to dribble the basketball down. They have her eyes up again, not having to look at the basketball. And that's what you want your point guard to be able to do. Tim, they've taken a timeout. We're going to take a 30 second timeout. We'll be back with more TWSAA action. Because you can see forever from. Dairy Farmer families are proud to support high school athletics and TWSAA. Milk is a great source of protein and chocolate milk and a great way to fuel muscles after exercise. So lift up the glass and toast your local dairy farmer as you build strong and healthy bones and muscles. 30-15 Webb leads it earlier today. Franklin Road Academy, a winner over Fayette Academy, 39-27 in girls play. And on the boys' side of things, University School of Nashville, 66-48 winner over Harding Academy. Next game up. DCA and Webb will finish up tonight. The legendary Tim Tackett along with Coach Joe Holloway here. We've got a great game. Even though it's 30 to 15, as Tim told you, these teams have played hard. They've been impressive. And I like both of these teams, and I think we'll see them here in the future too. And it's going to belong to Ezel Harding, to Froden against the pressure, to Sneed. Long pass end to the forecourt. And back and forth they go. Feenstra back out front, the shot off iron from the left wing. And they say there's a rebounding foul under there, Tim. And now a little foul trouble starting to mount up for Ezel Harding. Well, Ezel, the girls are holding their composure. The fans are getting a little frustrated. It's, you know, when you're shooting five of 26 is where, and zero from eight from the three-point line, the game begins to get to be a little bit tougher because you just can't score. And that was Harmon's first foul. Third team foul, 2.49 to go in the third quarter play, and there's Melton Sneed with that great battle. High pick for, switch, picked up, and the ball will be last touched by Kiana Froden. Stepped out in the passing lane, couldn't quite get her hands on it in time to control it. And let's see, Webb to inbound, Imani Smith, and he's L. Harding pretty well sticking to that man-to-man. -man. They have to force the action a little bit now. Be a box set up in the screen. They wanted to run America's play, but it didn't materialize. Here's Vivito out front. Finds Collier. Collier has really played a good game also today. Crosses over. Her and Allen, a good matchup. Here's the steal. It's Froden. She's going to go coast to coast. Lays it up and off the iron. And now Imani Smith fires out of there like a rocket coming down the right side. She's trapped, but gets it out of there to Melton. Looking in the post to Davis. Davis double team. There's the kick out over to Collier. Her three up off the front of the iron, and Sneed wants to run. Too bad for Ezel last time down. They had two points, just couldn't quite get it to go down. 
having another steal. I, I keep mentioning Webb just keeps sitting there waiting for Ezel to maybe catch up. Only three points scored by both teams, three to three in this, uh, and we played six minutes of the second half. Yeah, and you can't fault either one of these two teams. They've hustled and given it all. It's almost like there's a lid or a force field on the goals right now. Here's Webb to inbound it. Davis gives it, and Collier will take the point guard spot. Melton's going to get a rest. A brief one, I would imagine. Yes. And they're going to come left side looking for Brown, but good defense by Sneed. There's the dribble handoff back to Collier. She'll center it and start her offense again, trying the right side. Boy, her and Sneed now having a good battle. Hurdle pops out, wants to drive left, gets a screen, stops, dishes it off to Brown, back out front to Valito. Looking for Davis cutting, but a good defense by Azel Harding. Yeah, they got four players out on the perimeter running almost a weave, almost a delay contest, waiting for Davis to see if she can't find a way to open up inside, get to the top of the key. It is. Hurdles cut high, and then she sails one over to Brown. It went through her hands, but she retrieves it. Good motion. There's a 17-footer up, bounces around by Davis. No good rebound. Vito had it. She went up and looked like a reach-in on Nowlin, and that would be her third foul. Webb uh, with uh, three players... I'm just trying to look at this thing at eyeball at least. Three players at least taller than anybody that Ezel Harding has out on the floor right now. And going to the line is Vivito. She's not been there. She's three for five on field goals today. Her first one up and off the back of the iron. As a team, Knox Webb is two for five now. Tim, they've got 28 rebounds right now. Here is Vivito, Kelly Vivito to try her second one, shot it. It bounces around off the iron. Skying was Nowlin, and Nowlin stripped. I think we got a hold on Collier. We do. I was looking at turnovers. Not particularly a clean game, Joe. 17 turnovers against Ezel Harding, 14 against Webb. That's 31. Uh, a lot more than either coach would like to have, I'm sure. Oh, that's right. You, you really would love for your turnovers to stay at 10 and under for yeah, the Yeah, you want to see single digits if you can, it, especially when you're playing a state caliber a championship type game but uh you know you're on a different type floor you're in a different type atmosphere joe it's, it's a lot tougher to play these games yeah a lot of kids this floor is 10 feet longer than what a lot of them play on here it is in the high post to froden her shot no good but there's Harmon to rebound in the stick back and at the 101 mark he's l harding now has 17 points 30 to 17 webb still leading 55 seconds of counting in the third quarter Here's Romano driving, and I think she's going to be fouled in. You mentioned Melton being out. She's right back in the basketball game. Got, what, about a 30-second uh, breather before she got back out on the floor. A very important card. Five team fouls on Ezel Harding, four on Webb, 49.8 seconds. Two fouls now on Froden. Man-to-man -man against the out-of-bounds play. Into Melton. Melton looks, crossover, feeds into the post to Romano. It's kicked back out. There's Davis. Davis got a three. They backed off with the big girl. They did, and she shot it just like you're supposed to. All the confidence in the world. And here quickly into the forecourt, but knocked away by Webb with 34.9 seconds. Webb School of Knoxville leading Ezel Harding, 33-17. Snead's got it with 34 seconds left in the third quarter against the 2-3 zone. Passed around the horn to Froden left wing into the high post. Down on the baseline to Harmon. Harmon's left-handed shot from 14 up and good. Yeah, nice shot. 20 seconds, 33-19. Webb with the lead, and here's Melton on the attack. Left side, starts to drive, hands off to Brown. Brown stops, pops off the iron from 15. Rebound down Froden. She's got eight seconds, seven seconds. And stealing it is Melton. Gets up dribbling, crosses over, pass to Brown with one second. Her shot short, the tip. Up, will it count? Let's see. And they say the basket was good. And he's L. Harding. Can't recall the, pull, recall the player for, for Webb thought there was no time left and, and kind of shot a panic shot and right into the hands of a teammate. And we'll take a one minute timeout here on the TWSWA Network. Want to take a look at this? Thanks to Blue Cross's Walking Works for Schools program, Tennessee kids have walked over 17 million miles in the past five years. That's enough for 35 trips to the moon and back. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. Committed to getting kids walking and healthy. 
Get involved at bcbst.com slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat or we'll choose one for you. Arena. Tim Taggett, Coach Joe Holloway, and a little advice from time to time from our good friend and back in the back there. Tell you what, it's been a great contest, 35-19. Well, Leading right now, Rizel Harding and Allen back in the game, and she goes to Sneed. Sneed gives it over to Harmon. Well, that's Johnson, actually, and now here's back to Sneed. She drives, and Allen wants to go up, and she'll go to the line shoot two, Tim. Webb with a 1-3-1 one, one zone. They've moved it defensively. They've changed things up a lot and kept Rizel Harding off balance. has a lot to do with that 7 for 30 shooting that uh, the Lady Eagles have. Now on three for six from the free throw line with seven rebounds, and she needs to cut into this lead right now with 7.49 to go. First one up, shot it, got it. We have just 7.49 from playing for another state championship. They have two in the bag and uh, would like to play for a third one on Saturday. As the second one tries it, buys it. It's 35-21, and here's full court man pressure by Ezell Harding. And they may, Tim, I may have to eat my words. That looks like they matched up out of a 1-2-1-1. One, one, one. They have. It's exactly what it is. 7-49 as that one's knocked out of bounds. Davis to trigger the inbound. Set throw in. We're going to see full court pressure from Ezell the rest of the game. You can count on that. Oh, yeah. Here's the trap on Romano to Davis. Davis looking back to Romano. She streaks across the line. Gets it to Brown to Melton. Melton's 14-footer up off the iron. Rebound. Fall forward. Bounced out to Froden. She's double teamed. Loses it. They said she was fouled by Melton then. Hurdle was open under the basket for Webb. They just couldn't see her when they broke the pressure. They had three on one and couldn't quite get it to the player they needed to. Azel Harding, Tim, has not hit a three-point field goal, and they're only 23.3% on field goals, while Webb shooting 39.5% from the field and 23% from the three line. Going four out, one under. They'll run a baseline cutter. Sneed drives left side, and they look for that cutter, and that was now, and she wants to wheel and deal. Hook pass, bounced off Harmon's hand. She gets it, goes up, rolls one over the rim. And you know, she's got a nice shot inside. Left-handed, nice and soft, squares up very well. It's soft. 35-23, and you see Melton lose it. Notice how she kept control and didn't kept control, walk the basket. Went to the floor, came right back up, never lost her dribble. There's a Here, nice steal for Ezell. Here's the steal by Froden. She tries to flip it in, but it is picked off by Davis. Davis goes to the hole, and they call a block. Well, probably a good foul for Ezell because Davis had made the pass, and it was going to be a layup for Webb. The foul will go. It will send Davis, I guess, to the free throw line. No, that's no. sixth foul, so uh, it won't give up points here. And that's Nowlin, and that's an item. That would be her fourth foul. Well, that's team. not a good foul then because they really cannot afford to do without her. No, you could almost give up the bucket because you could get the two, what I call two for one. I'd rather I'll get two buckets for that one if Nowlin's on the floor. And here's the out-of-bounds play to Brown, and it's good right there. Well, it drives you crazy as a coach to give up a, bu a bucket up up under there on an out-of-bounds play. Oh, it, it is. Uh, McAvoy in. I didn't get to say that. And there's a pass knocked away, stolen by Melton. She'll go in for the left-handed layup and good. And just like that, four quick points, Webb has pushed this lead out to 39 23 with 6.30 to go in the contest. Coach. Here's Froden driving up, rolls around, falls off, and Brown with it. And she'll slow it down because there's some pressure. And Melton, she's not going to slow it down. She's coming full speed, feeds the post for Mono, back out front to Davis, to Melton, and Melton gets her first three, I believe. That is her first, and here's a steal. Tim end to end action. Melton's got the out in the pass, tries to give it back. She loses it, and here's Johnson going quickly to Harmon. Harmon drives, crosses over, loses it, but retrieved by Halea Johnson. Back into Harmon in the low post. She goes up, and she's fouled. Johnson's winded, if you look at her in there right now. She's got her hands on her hips. She is really struggling up and down the floor right now. That's right. Some of these girls have logged some long minutes for Ezell Harding. I believe Harmon and Johnson both. Uh, when you see them tug at the shorts a little bit, you know they're tired, Tim. 
But Harmon at the line, and she is one for two there. She is now one for three. Anisha Harmon. Just a sophomore. sophomore. That's, sure. a That's a young team. And uh, let's see, coming back into the game is Kelly Vivito. Davis coming out. Anisha Harmon will try her second. The left-hander shot is up, rolls around. There's that soft touch and in. 42-24, 5.50 to go. And Melton of Webb on the attack. Crossover, goes to the hole to Brown. Out front, Vivito looks inside, oh, nice finds feet. Romano. And Romano knocks it out of bounds. Nice look there by Vito, and uh, just couldn't get the shot to go down on the pass. It really was. Here's the changing defenses again, back to the 2-2-1 press. Well, the, the, the theme to most all this, Joe, is there's been pressure. They've not backed off and setting anything. That's the name of the game. Long pass gets by and goes to Johnson. Johnson is foul. Almost a three-point play, but it rolled off the rim. You know, and in these situations, the one thing that you can give up if they break the press is the easy shot and a quick shot. I, I'm not sure if Webb might at some point in time want to go back and sit back a little bit and, and, and allow Ezel to just make them burn some clock as they run outside the uh, perimeter offense and not have quite so much pressure. That's right. First one up by Johnson. And my apologies to Kelly. It's Vita Toe. Vita Toe. And I got it right. And Kelly, you've done a great job. She did pick up her third foul, though. And the second shot up and good that time by Hylia Johnson. And that cuts it to a 42-26 game. Webb with the lead and Melton on the attack. Over to Vita Toe. Her shot up and good. She drained that from about she's, 17. Yeah, she's a very nice-looking shot. Both teams well coached. Eight points for Vita Toe. And the... Referee calls time. There's something on the floor. Somebody lost a hairband. Don't have that too often in boys' basketball. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, Webb uh, School with just three seniors on the basketball team, Joe, so we'll make it four. But uh, they've got uh, a lot of youth out there right now, Fresh, a couple freshmen and a sophomore, that uh, th this team's going to be back. Yes, and they played without Marjorie Butler, the Georgia signee, y'all. You hear Snead driving left side. Got out in deep and was trapped there by Hurdle and one other lost it. And Webb has it. Melton takes control. And now just slowing it down just a hair at the 458 mark. On the attack is Webb. And that's Brown driving her layup off the glass, and it's time to her. He's out, needed somebody rotate from the backside to uh, to help out. Never got there in time. Easy, Johnson. easy bucket. Yeah, quickly to Harmon. And down and off of Johnson's hands looks like Tim. Tim, are we going to start to get a few new faces? I see Nylon back in. Oh, I think we're we're a couple of minutes away from that anyway. 20-point uh, lead. I don't know that you're going to see Shelly Collier make any wholesale substitutions quite yet. Well, I see Batson, and if I'm not mistaken, it's Lauren Batson's first appearance in the contest. But as a coach, Harden. you'd love to be able to get every kid on the floor and say they, they played in the state championship contest. Oh, you would. You would at that. Here's Webb on the attack. To Melton, she drives. Crossover left hook layup, no good. Rebound pulled down by Harmon. Harmon over to Feinster. Feinster back to Nallen, who's back in there. Her shot up and knocked around. And here's a run out wide open. If she can catch up with it, it's Brown, and she misses it. She got a little far into the goal. We had two easy players run together on this end of the floor, and both of them just getting up. Johnson and Harmon. Hopefully, they're both okay. The official's going to stop play and say, "Let's let's check this out and make sure." Everybody is all right. And they uh, pick up another hairband. And uh, check, you're right, check out everybody. And it looks like Hylia Johnson to inbound the basketball. She gets it out front and then back to her and then down in the corner of the who wants to feed the post. I think you're going to have holding in the post. Yeah, there. you do. you got a holding against uh, Vitito. She's uh, trying to guard from the backside and Nice job of screening out in there. I guess that's Harmon. And made her, yep. made her foul. Vita told that would be her fourth foul. She's the only person in foul trouble. And Johnson at the line. She's one for two from the free throw line. Make that two for three. Nice soft shot, Tim. She really does. And here comes five fresh players, even though they're not all 
brand new ones because I see at least one. That'd be Madison Davis has logged a lot of minutes. It'll check in the web at the next break. Beta Toe, as you saw, got the rebound, gave it to Melton. And again, man-to-man -man or player-to-player -player employed here. Here's Brown, and she kicks it back to Melton, starts the drive, kicks it to Brown. Her three is up. Nothing but air that time. And wholesale substitution. Davis we've seen already. Smith we have seen for Webb. Let's, there's some Katie Collier's also in. She's played a good yeah. number of minutes. So you've got fresh faces. Of it That says something about the strength of their bench, doesn't it? Okay, yes. Dave Vance is in there wearing 32. Here's a shot by Feenstra. Rebound Harmon, and she's working hard under there. Harmon up 46-29. Webb ahead of Ezel Harding, 317 to go in the contest, Tim, but I like that action. Here's the cutting Davis for saving a pass. Gets knocked away, picks it up. Smith has it out on the perimeter. Over to Collier, left side. On the wing, that's the other new player that's in. That's Deja Maxwell. She's going to drive, wants to get through there, kicks it out to Smith. Back to Davis, who's working the perimeter. Pulls up, shoots a 14-footer off the front of the iron, and there is a busy young lady, Miss Johnson, who gets it. Kicks it down to teammates, now gets it back. Tries to feed down into the low Good post idea. There. Great idea. She was looking for Lauren Batson. Well, we got new, more new people coming in. I think Chelsea Smith, is. this is her second appearance in the contest. I'm, looking, I'm a little confused by the uh, computer that got, got in front of us. The scoreboard has Johnson with 15 points. The computer only shows her with nine. Yeah, we'll have to get a ruling on I think on the that. 15 is probably right. I'm so used to keeping my own scorebook, and I'm trusting modern technology. And Coach Collier wants a timeout. She's going to take a 30. Tim, let's take a 30-second timeout here on the Tennessee Sports Network. Hello. miss any of the action, tune in to TWSAANetwork.com to watch a replay of tonight's games or purchase DVDs of tonight's games at TWSAANetwork.com. And Tim back to action running a weave outside is Webb. And Smith's got it. She goes over to Collier right side. Collier wants to drive towards that baseline and loses it out of bounds. There was that weak side defense I've asked for. Ezel brought it that time and Collier not able to do anything with it except kind of fumble it out of bounds. Man, put you on staff again, Tim. Well, sometimes I, I bet they're being coached to do it. Yep. Sometimes it just doesn't always work out that way. Here's the shot up and no good by Gina Burnett, who is in the contest now. And uh, we've got subs on both teams. Let's make sure we miss mention everybody. We don't want to miss anybody. And I think that they'll back up to about three quarter. Now here comes a little pressure. And that is by Chelsea Smith. Here's Collier getting it across the line into the low post to Davis, and her layup is good. 48-29, 153 to lift. Webb with the lead. Down on the baseline. Shot up. Air ball off the backside. Rebound pulled down by Webb. Smith's got it, and she'll give it to Collier, and they'll slow it down this time, Tim. Well, we're about to play this one out now. 19-point lead by Webb, almost a snuther bucket, didn't get it to go. Collier shot missed, rebound Smith, kicks it way outside. Back to Collier, left side, three up, off the front of the iron. We'll see rebound fought for, and picked up by Aish, or Imani Smith. Coach Dan Carter's going to clear his bench and, and get the rest of his players in the game at the next break. Driving was Deja Maxwell, her shot no good. Rebound pulled off there. By number 23, that's Jenna Burnett, a freshman, and a long pass into the forecourt. And the shot by Finstra up, no good. Rebound pulled down by Dave Vance. And Collier will control with 56 seconds. And Ezel Harding will try to 
empty their bench behind the back. Collier, she wants to drive. Good job of defense there by Chelsea Smith. And the referee does the proper thing. I love it when they do that and let these kids in. He's got a five-second call, and he'll get the players in the basketball game. And he got the five-second call. But he was figuring if they hadn't had the five-second call, there would have been a it might, stop. It might have been part of that deal. I don't think it had an effect on the game at all, do you? No, I don't think so. 48-29. And let's see. Shannon Beatty wearing 20 is in. 34 who inbounded it. Bethany Johnson. We want to get these kids mentioned. 33. Mary Catherine Willoughby is in there. And a shot by Willoughby up. No good. McAvoy back in there. She's been in. There's a shot outside by Shannon Beatty. No good. She's an eighth grader. So this is really a young Ezell Harding team. 30 seconds left, Tim, with a 48-29 commanding lead right now by oh. Knox Webb. They'll advance to championship action and here. The crowd from Webb up on their feet, extolling their team. They'll play 11 o'clock on Saturday morning for a state championship. And there's Deja Maxwell getting her name into the scorebook. The 5-7 freshman scores. And that makes it 50-29, Webb ahead. Here's the pass around the horn, knocked away as Beatty's pass was knocked away by Maxwell. 4.5 seconds with Ezell Harding to inbound. Bethany Johnson inbounds in backcourt to Beatty. Across the timeline, the shot up by 24. Lowry and no good. The final in this contest, Webb 50, Ezell Harding 29. We are going to take a two-minute break, a two-minute break, and then we'll come back with more TSSAA action. I see history. I see numbers. I see music. I see spaceships. I see a butterfly. Each year, the School Advocates for Vision and Education in Memphis makes it possible for hundreds of school children to get the glasses they need, all for free. I see my future. So whatever they see, they see better. That's why Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee supports them. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee is for Tennessee. I see you. See how Blue Cross is impacting your community at bcbst.com forward slash impact. Take me home tonight. You can choose the back seat. Or we'll choose one for you. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Alright, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the TSSAA Network, go to tssaanetwork.com slash SBP.